Advent is a season of preparation. And a lot of times when we're preparing for something, it's, it's something we, we know about in advance. You know, like if we're preparing for Thanksgiving dinner, we know the day and the time that that dinner is going to be. And so we can prepare leading up to this, this known day and time. Of course, there's other things in our life like that. Maybe it's the day of a final exam or when a term paper is due. Maybe it's a deadline that we have at work. A lot of times we have these, these set dates, a day we can circle on the, on the calendar and, and prepare for and, and know about ahead of time. Some people deal differently with deadlines. Some people like to work uh, well in advance and kind of plot along, and, and it's, a, it's a good thing for them if they're done well ahead of that, of that deadline. Other people thrive on pressure and will intentionally go right up to when something is about due before they even start. And like they can't even, they can't even think well without that pressure. Other people, that would get, fill them with anxiety and like shut down their ability to think. So we deal with, with deadlines and dates in the future and on the calendar in different ways. Maybe we're prone to procrastination sometimes. Like, well, you know, I got time. But when it comes to uh, Jesus' coming again, which is a part of what we prepare for in Advent, we don't know that date or that time, as Jesus says in the Gospel. Part of our preparation for Advent is, of course, preparing in a special way and spiritually and everything to get ready to celebrate even more fully the joy of Jesus' birth at Christmas. We know December 25th is a date on the calendar that we can circle and we can uh, count the days uh, to whatever kind of Advent wreath it is that you have, or Advent calendar it is that you have, and whatever that's made out of. But also during the Advent season, we're preparing for Jesus coming again in glory. But with that, there's no date on the calendar that we can circle. There's no specific day and time that we're, that we're moving towards. Maybe that fills us with a little um, trepidation, perhaps. But Jesus coming again is, is a day of, of great joy. It's a day when, when the one who, who made us to be in relationship with him is, is going to come fully. The one who loves us so much that he died for our sake. The one through whom we have life. The one who is our way and the truth and the life. St. Augustine said, what kind of love would it be for Jesus if we're, if we're fearing his coming? So it's not a a fear, but a, but a joyful patience in a waiting. But this time where in the church we've been waiting for 2,000 years for Jesus to come again, maybe it can easy, be easy to sort of get into a lull in our, in our waiting for the Lord to come again. We do pray for it. In the liturgy, we say as we await the joyful hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we look forward to his second coming and all of that, but it, it can catch us, you know, in a lull, especially with all the other stuff that's going on in our life. So it's good that we have this season of Advent to draw us back to that reality of Jesus' coming again, whether it's the day that he comes to meet us or the day that we go to meet him. We don't know that, what that date will be. And so we have this time of waiting, but not a passive waiting, but an active waiting. A time where we, we put on Jesus in a new way. And that we look to walk in his light in a new way each day. Each day we have these, these invitations to grow in our relationship with God and others more deeply. Each day we have these perhaps little moments where we can make the choice to grow in our relationship with God and love of one another. And so the season of Advent is a time to take on anew this intentionality of moving towards the Lord. We see in our first reading this passage from Isaiah, it's certainly not passive, there's this very active scene where the, the Lord's house is on the highest mountain, all the nations are streaming towards it. Come, let us climb to the house of Jacob up on this mountain. This is the putting God first in our life. It's the praise of God in our life that that helps orient us in our life and everything in it, that helps bring us that peace that we're all longing for. 
the other day in, in discussing our, our readings uh, on Tuesday, I thought about, we were talking about climbing. I don't have a ton of experience with climbing stuff. But I was thinking about the, the rock wall at uh, Catholic Youth Summer Camp there in Centerburg, which, fun fact, is the t tallest freestanding rock wall in the state of Ohio. So when you're up on this uh, rock wall, one, it's probably best not to look down. And two, you just got to keep, keep looking for that next step, the next foothold, the next handhold. And um, I know sometimes when I'm up there, maybe it's just because I'm a lot older than other people climbing the rock wall, it's like, man, I got to take a little break here, you know, and then like psych myself up for that next kind of reach. The nice thing, too, about that experience is that there's people down below on the ground who have a different perspective. And they can help the people who are up on the wall. And so they can yell up like, hey, you see the, the little blue handhold there? Try, try getting your right hand on that. Something that if you're up there, you might not have even noticed in the flurry of the climb. But someone's down to help uh, give you a new perspective and, uh, and help you on your climb. Of course, too, uh, if, you, if you slip off, there's not only the rope, but there's people down below uh, to help catch you. I know it's always in, in kind of fun and endearing to me when I'm trying to make the climb and I hear like these kids down below like, come on, Father, you got this, go. <laughs> the ultimate goal of the rock wall, the ultimate success, the ultimate victory is actually not to reach the top necessarily. It's just to do the best you can and maybe to climb higher than you, than you thought you could when you were down on the ground. Overcoming fears, overcoming obstacles, uh, with the help of those uh, around you. And so it is in our Christian life that as we grow as disciples together, we're just trying to each day take that, that next step up towards the Lord, welcoming him more into our lives, putting on that, that armor of light, putting on Jesus more in our life, and just being intentional about preparing for our eternal um, home, of course, we know, too, in the midst of all that, that God doesn't leave us abandoned. He's always with us, and that Jesus is with us in a special way through the sacrament of the Eucharist, so we can indeed know his presence, his, his grace, his life flowing into ours as we look to go about our, our life each day. So as we encounter Christ here in the Mass today, let's indeed know and be open to his presence in our life in a new way and allow his grace to transform us and to keep us moving forward until that day when we will see him face to face.